on this week's Talking with Topher. Sounds stupid. But right. <laughs> it's, it's a balance. I mean, yeah. I put up <laughs> over 190 of these things. Yeah, so at yeah. some point in time, I sound pretty stupid. No, so you're fine. Okay. <laughs> but when you're at the point where you're in a car and mm-hmm. you're taking a handful of pills, mm-hmm. that is the definition of depression. Mm-hmm. And now let's get into episode 194. What is happening, TWT fans? It is so good to be back on this December 21st, 2023, and I am so glad to have you all back here with me. I've got an amazing podcast today, but before I get into anything, let me start off the way I always do, by saying thank you. Thank you to all the subscribers. Thank you to the new subscribers. Um, keep sharing, rating, giving thumbs up for all the videos, and especially uh, like and thumbs up the videos for the guests. Um, if you're new to the podcast or just checking it out, maybe you got sent the link tree and now you're checking this out, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's the one thing I'm asking everybody to do. It's free for you, so go ahead and click it. And then, of course, if you want your opportunity to be on the podcast, maybe you want to be a guest, maybe you want your story to be heard, well, send an email over to the official email of the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N-Wittofer at gmail.com. You can uh, send a video, audio, or type it out, but you got to send it over to the official email of the podcast, T-A-L-K-I-N-Wittofer at gmail.com. And then, of course, don't forget the link tree. Um, it's the easiest way to find everything TWT. It's also the best way to share the podcast with everyone you know. So go ahead, copy, share that link. Um, TWT link tree. Uh, it's it's just that easy. All right. So now with all that out of the way, this podcast was amazing. Um, my guest um, was awesome. Her story is is it's something to be heard. And the first thing that I want to do. Uh, for everybody out there is apologize for no video. Um, but I got all the audio. I'm hoping most of you are just listening to this podcast anyways. So instead of me rambling on and on and on the way I am doing right now, let's get into today's episode with my guest, Tanya Marie Bouchard. All right, we are in it. So, um, Tanya Barshard, it yes. is so nice to have you on the podcast. On the podcast, and um, um, I should have said Tanya Marie Barshard. Yeah. yeah, I like that. <laughs> I like that hyphenated name. I think Thank that's you. really neat because you, you just don't see that anymore. Actually, the only way you see hyphenations in people's names now is when people get married today. Yeah, they hyphenate the last name. Weird. My sister did it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been noticing that's quite the trend. It, yeah, I guess uh, uh, is that. Is that something that like people do you do you know if people do that because they just don't want to let go of their last name anymore or um, you're you're a little bit younger than me yeah. so I I only know when you get married you take you, like the, you the woman ta- usually takes yeah takes the takes mm-hmm. the name um but my sister didn't do that and you know I never asked her why yeah. You ever heard of anything about that? No, maybe it's just like personal preference. You go so long with the same name and Hmm. All of a sudden, it just sounds weird changing your last name. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know? right. But so why why was your name hyphenated? So fun fact, I'm actually named after a cat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you, yeah, you learn new things every day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. So Tanya Marie, my dad liked the name Tanya. Uh-huh. I'm not sure where Marie came from, but. He prefers if people call me Tanya Marie instead of Tanya. Like going all throughout school, you know, her name is Tanya Marie. It's not Tanya. 
And, you know, after, like, middle school and high school, it kind of dropped off, and he's fine now, but... Well, he's fine with Tanya. Yeah, yeah, he's All fine right, with Tanya, so but he was good, very good. adamant for a long time about it being Tanya Marie. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. wow. Yep. I mean, that's that's good, because I don't want him to get mad at me for using your name incorrectly. No, that's okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, I, w- I want to get to know you a little bit before we get into uh, what you're here for today. Yep. And um, so, have you... Always, you you lived in Chester before you lived in Derry, and yes. and and your brother is Mason, mm-hmm. who I've had on the podcast. Yes. Your father is Tim, mm-hmm. who runs the school, and um, I want to make sure I get this correct, but uh, Shehan Laura is your stepmom. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. But you, I think Mason had mentioned you. You've always looked at her as. Like your mom, yeah. In so a sense, they've been um, they've been together now. I think fourteen years. Fourteen years. Yeah. Um, don't get mad at me if I'm if I'm wrong. No, um, that's, that's all right. <laughs> I think it's I think they just celebrated fourteen years. That's so yeah, awesome. she's been around since we were. I was thirteen. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, and I'm twenty seven now. Because you're older. I'm older than me. You're the older yep. older sister, mm-hmm. right? Right. So what was uh when when. They used to live, you used to live, I should say, in Chester, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when did you start, like, helping out and working at uh, PMA? So I was I was 15 when I started working there. Um, and, you know, my dad was always of the way of you either play sports or you work. Mm-hmm. So for a long time, like I would do cheerleading. Okay. Um, I'm not the most graceful cheerleader. I'm <laughs> or the peppiest, but uh, I did that. And right around sophomore, junior year, I was like, I'm done. You know, the coach just kind of, kind of ruined that one for me. Okay. Um, so I started working there, and I've been there for eleven, twelve years. Eleven, twelve years yeah. now. Mm-hmm. So, so you. I, I see you in a gi, but yes. it's a karate gi. Yes. So you're a black belt in karate. Yeah, I'm a correct? fourth. I'm a fourth degree. Yeah. Fourth degree. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, very very cool, very cool. Now, uh, what about the um, the Muay Thai? And yeah. Anything like that? Like how how involved have you? Like besides karate? Yeah. Like how involved? Are you in the other aspects of PMA? I'm so, just curious. Yeah. How, you so, know. as you know, I trained Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for a little while. You did? Um, I did. I was just going to get to that. I okay, did. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I personally love Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, especially if you're somebody that has, like, you know, you want to get some sort of, you can you can rip pads and you can, you know, roll and choke people. And uh, Jiu Jitsu for me is more of a mental game mm-hmm. um, because my opponents are bigger and they're stronger and right. they're faster. And, you know, Punching pads is is probably one of my favorite things to release stress. Okay. Um, Muay Thai, I've I've done it hmm, not nearly as long as I I have been in the karate program, but it's definitely I if I can choose between it, I like Muay Thai and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So you've been now being a fourth degree black belt. You teach a bunch of classes as well? No. So I um I did teach in the beginning when I started oh, I was an assistant instructor. So okay. I would I would kind of help out like our SWAT team does. Um and at the time, you know, it was a different a different person running classes. And um when he left, mm-hmm. that's when I kind of stepped in and uh, I taught for right around eight years. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Really? And yeah. that was karate. Yes. Okay. So you have dabbled in uh, Muay Thai, yep. you've taught and you're a fourth degree in karate. Yep. And as for Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, mm-hmm. I've never seen you on the mats. So where, yeah. where, where is your level at there? Yeah. So I'm still, I'm a one stripe white belt. Oh, <laughs> yeah. all right. All right. So, yeah. So. so, um, I, I am, th- this is my, maybe my excuse to a lot of people. Um, and, and I know this, uh, but I pick at my face. Um, so I've actually gotten quite a few staff infections, not from the school being dirty or anything oh, like that. Like it's I probably see. one of the cleaner schools that you're going to come across. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But we carry a normal amount of staff on our bodies. Yes. So me picking and then like even just touching my hand and then touching my face can give you a staff infection. Right. So I just need to get that little habit under control. It's like a nervous thing. Okay. And yes. Then, and then. Um, yeah, once once I do that, I'll I'll get back. You'll get back classes. on the mat. Yeah, All yeah. Right. Was, and you heard it here, so now I gotta now <laughs> I gotta do it. <laughs> hey, that's, that's how it works. Yep, huh? yep. 
I do the same thing for mm-hmm. myself. Whenever I'm going to plan on doing something, I've now learned that if I put it out there, you got to say it to somebody, you got to, you got to mm-hmm. stick to it. You got to do yeah. it, but, uh, you gotta, you gotta kind of put it out there to make yourself do the actual right. um, action. Right. Um, holding yourself accountable. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I've been, I've been doing this, uh, podcast now for four years and mm-hmm. a lot of it is based off of, uh, life struggles um dealing with those struggles Mm -hmm. and becoming a stronger person because we dealt with those struggles head on and then got through them because that will make you and anybody a stronger person when you go through with all of that so we are here today to talk about uh something that you had struggled with Mm -hmm. um and it seems like it was pretty heavy yeah um and uh i'm actually uh wanted you to just start wherever you want to start with this uh i don't know anything about it i kept it this way on purpose yep um but try to take it to you know before it started like okay and 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 bring us into uh what's going on and we can kind of toss stuff some stuff back and forth yeah. after, after that yeah so um the the incident that you're mentioning it it, it happened in 2018 okay so i was i don't, I don't remember how old um Is that seven years ago mm-hmm. yeah so seven seven years ago? is that seven 2018 two plus four okay um, so six. Six, six years ago close enough um but so yeah i was in it was 2018 you know um I can't say there was anything, like, thinking back on it, I can't say there was anything super specific that happened that it, it wasn't, like, one big event where I was like, you know what, like, screw this, I'm, I'm done. Like, I've, I, I've tried, I've given it my best shot. Like, I, I think a lot of time it's, it's a little, it's a bunch of little things that build that aren't dealt with, and they just kind of, like, they're repressed, and they come out in a massive way, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so 2018, you know, there was, like I said, there wasn't anything big going on. Like I just, I'm not a talker with my feelings. Like I don't tell you when I'm upset. I don't tell you realistically anything. Um, so I was actually, it was in Manchester. Um, I was by, what's it called? It's like a little parking lot with like the river. Okay. Um, I think I know where you're talking about. I'm just not specific on the area. Yeah. Yep. So, um, I was sitting there one day and it was just, you know, life kind of all actually before that, I apologize. So I was, I was house sitting for my boss and, um, you know, there was one night where everything just kind of caught up to me and I remember calling Mason. Um, so as you mentioned, he was on your podcast and, and he was at a college party and, you know, he's took the time and, and I told him, I was like, you know what? I was like, I was like, I can't do this anymore well, what do you mean? Like called me crying. Like I, you know, saying that I'm his big sister and that, you know, he looked up to me at that, at that time, you know, and, um, kind of, it brought me back down to like base level. And then I want to say three days after is, uh, when I was sitting in the parking lot and I was like, you know what? I didn't talk to anybody. I was just was sitting there and, um, yeah, that's when I, I kind of decided, I was like, you know what, like, I think, I think everybody is better off. You know, I really? think I'm better off. I think everybody else is better off. And um, so I, I took a bunch of pills. Okay. Yep. Um, and uh, I remember calling my dad. And, um, you know, it was, it was maybe like 30 minutes after. And uh, he's like, why would you do that? And they were actually at an event. Uh, oh, for the school. Okay. And, um, like the black belt event mm-hmm, type of thing. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, they, they rushed to me and, you know, my stomach was pumped and I was intubated and I was over at, uh, at CMC for, for four days. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. So when, when these thoughts are happening, because mm-hmm. I, I'll be honest with you, and I don't know if anybody else agrees with me, and it's if you don't, that's fine uh-huh. talking to them. Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I've always thought of 
suicide mm-hmm. as and I know it's a trigger word to YouTube, but this will go up on Rumble. As I well. was going to say I wasn't sure. I didn't want to say our, it because I wasn't hey, sure. <laughs> we have to be able to talk freely. Exactly. And, okay. and whether this gets taken down on YouTube yep. and is only available on Rumble doesn't mm-hmm. matter to me because okay. the simple fact is, is we need to be able to discuss these things. Right. Right. Um, but uh, mental health today, I mm-hmm. think, is getting thrown around a little too freely freely Mm -hmm. you know everybody's got a mental disorder and Mm -hmm. you know so that being said i know that it is something that is serious it affects people and when people feel like they have nothing left to live for Mm -hmm. that's when they choose to do it but i've always thought of it as a weakness and 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 i'm i i i i kind of want to i don't want to say it but i do want to say it because Mm -hmm. A lot of people said that. Uh, there was the um, DJ mm-hmm. for the Ellen Show. Yep. Who killed himself? L- yep. Twitch. Um, yeah. Yeah. Twitch. Yep. And it was it was very shocking. Yeah. Because it's very quick. Nobody thought mm-hmm. that, that guy had any issues. Right. I saw him dancing around with his kid. It's this and that. New, Movies new and the whole yeah, thing. Great right? personality. Happy, 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 happy. Mm-hmm. That was the persona. Absolutely. And then all of a sudden, boom. Mm-hmm. And it was like. Everybody was like, oh, this is ridiculous. He's weak and this and that. And what about the kids? And it's so selfish. Right. And I've also thought that way. Okay. And I don't know if it's actually an incorrect way to think about it. Okay. But it seems to be the default way to think about it. Right. So what was happening at that time Mm -hmm. where you actually thought, that this was a good idea mm-hmm. that because you had to have thought it was a good idea because we only convince ourselves right. to do something when we right. think it's a good idea. Right. You just said people would be better off without me. Right. So tr- show me or mm-hmm. tell me, mm-hmm. sorry. No, it's okay. Tell me what makes that not a selfish act in the moment that you're thinking about doing something like that. Right. So I think everybody's knee-jerk reaction is it's selfish. Yes. Um, so if you've never um, had a mental illness or battled, you know, suicide or anything like that, um, what a lot of people don't understand is when, like, the pain and the suffering and the hurt and everything like that, it suffocates your thinking. Okay. So a lot of times, like when people are in those moments or in that headspace or that thought process, they're not thinking about, you know, the people that they're going to be leaving behind, right. you know? Um, and a lot of people that are that haven't battled, you know, suicide, they, they have the ability and, and the luxury to view their situation from a safe distance, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so they're able to see the damage and, you know, the holes that they're going to leave behind in the people's life. So a lot of times, like, yeah, it... It comes off as selfish, um, but they're not thinking about anybody else, you know, about how like to be very, I was not thinking about my mom. I wasn't thinking about my dad. I wasn't thinking about, you know, my friends or the rest of my family. Like it it wasn't a thought in my head. So that being said, Mm -hmm. then who was better without you? If you weren't thinking of these I know, I know. So it's, it's crazy, right? um, Because it's, it's. It's hard because, you know, okay, like, okay, like, you know, the way I viewed it was that they're going to be fine. You know, Mm -hmm. like life goes, life goes on. Um, Maybe it was just my thought process of I'm better off not around. Okay. Um, You know, but yeah, it it is kind of like a contradiction, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, it just, um, like I said, it's, I think it's everybody's first reaction to, okay, like that, that was selfish. Um, but a lot of times I don't think people actually take a step back to be like, okay, like this person that I, I cared about and I loved didn't think they could overcome something anymore. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm I'm mad at you because you're selfish or you're hurt, but you're selfish. Um, well, I guess a so, lot of us would like the opportunity mm-hmm. to possibly fix the yeah. problem. And now yeah. you've, you, well, not you, but the person who does this to themselves, Mm -hmm. takes that away from everybody Yep, and doesn't give them the opportunity to try and help you to see if you you would make a different decision with support and love around you. Yeah. And so I think it comes from a place of anger 
that's, where you're yeah, angry, that's a good way to look at you're it. You're angry at mm-hmm. the person for not allowing you to help help them. Mm-hmm. And what could be so bad that you just can't be here anymore? I right. think is another thought that people have. Like yeah, you know, and and I'm not saying that these are incorrect thoughts no these are just thoughts that no that every everybody has it's very normal from both sides right Mm -hmm. you know and it's like so so they ended up getting the phone call Mm -hmm. coming around Mm -hmm. getting you out of the car or yeah so actually it was a it was a family friend who was closest to me at this time uh at the time his name was dennis okay and uh, i was just getting loaded into the ambulance as i saw him and i just i lost it Mm -hmm. um because at that point in my, I was so vulnerable and, um, I don't, I don't think I wanted anybody to see that, to okay. see that I needed help. Um, I don't like asking for help. I still don't like asking for help to this day. <laughs> um, but I, I am more vocal when I need a day, yeah. you know, like I'm like, Hey, like, you know, I, I need a mental health day. Like I just, right. or, you know, with, with Aria, I, I need help with Aria. I'm overwhelmed. I'm, I'm more, um, open to doing that now than trying to act like I can carry the world on my shoulders. Okay. Well, yeah. that's, that that's definitely, you know, mm-hmm. that's, that's the growth, right? right. And we'll, right. we'll definitely get to that, mm-hmm. but that's definitely the growth. And that's right. the opportunity that I was talking about that mm-hmm. gets taken away yeah. from friends and family members right. when nothing is said. And then they're right. like, what, what do you mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I could have, I could have helped. helped. Yeah. So, um, cause we all think we can help. Right. But, at the end of the day, a real true mental illness, because even for myself, mm-hmm. I've used the word suicide um, right. just to get my way. Okay. I've done that. Okay. I've been so drunk and disorderly that mm-hmm. I literally told somebody that if you didn't do this, I'm going to. Okay. One of those types of situations, right. which wound me up in a hospital and a padded room in jail. So, uh, right. because they right. were like, you use this word. Well, this here, the, here you go. This is yeah. the treatment you get. Yeah. You get, yeah. You, you know, no shoelaces, no nothing. No, no right. No, yeah. Right. Like it's, it's a very, uh, I, I learned after that, that you don't just throw that word around anymore. No. Uh, and that yeah. was something that I thought was like harmless. Mm-hmm. Right. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to do this. Right. But it helped me get my way. Right. And then the uh, the the law enforcement showed me what happens when, when you, you use these words. Right, right. Um, because they're also going to make sure nothing happens. You know right, what I mean? Right, right. Well, because you think about it, they, you. right, right. You say, hey, I'm, I'm going to go do this. And they're like, okay. And then if, you know, come come down the road, somebody finds out that you had this conversation and they didn't do anything, then yeah. Yeah. You are, yeah, they're they liable. are liable. Mm-hmm. So, so. It's 2018. You've mm-hmm. had your stomach pumped. Yep. Uh, this has happened. Yep. And when when did you have Aria? So I had her in 2020. 2020. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is this is a couple years After. Pri- prior. Yes. Right. Yeah. So Aria wasn't even a thought in my mind. At okay. That point. Okay. Yep. Okay. So then we get through this. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh. You're doing. You're doing obviously better. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Much much better. That's good. Yeah. And uh. Mm-hmm. So so. From 18 till the time, 2018, mm-hmm. should specify, to the time that Aria shows up. Mm-hmm. Um, is is this like a kind of a one and done? Yeah, so so yeah. And what, um, did, you, what did you do to prolong your um, mental state in a positive way after this? Yeah, so I think learning yourself is probably one of the hardest, but one of the most rewarding things that you can do. Okay. Um, so... As you know, I'm not sure if your experience is the same as mine, but, you know, um, I had to have a set therapist before I left the hospital. Okay, so I they, did not. Yeah, okay. so they were not releasing me um, from the hospital until I had an appointment. Okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah. Yep, so I, I went to see her, and, you know, ther- people love therapy. People don't love therapy. People believe in it. People don't. I didn't want to be there. Of course not. Not that I didn't want to be you know, I was glad I was still around. Like it, it was um, an eye-opening ex- experiment, uh, not experiment, experience. Right, right, <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, yes. So, um, I just didn't want to be there. Okay. Like I'm, uh, if I can open up to the people around me, I'm not going to open up to a stranger. I'm sorry, I don't know you. Yep. 
you don't care about me. Like I'm just $150 in your pocket for an hour, yeah, you know? I, it's a um, fair thought. Yeah. So I, I did give it a shot because, you know, like I had mentioned previously, the, the damage that's done to the people when you're not around is just as real as the damage done to the people when you try and you're still around. Yes. Um, the only difference is you get to visually see that. Exactly. And with exactly. That, it can make, that can make it a little bit harder to climb that hill yes. to get over this. Um, and I completely understand you when you say um, that you – come on, buttons, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, but you, I can completely understand what you meant by you didn't want to be there because mm-hmm. I don't know how many – um, AA meetings, therapy appointments, anger management appointments that I was forced into right. by our government and our court system. Right. Never wanted to be there. But mm-hmm. today, I'm a huge proponent for therapy. I yeah. think it does wonders. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is there people kind of like a chiropractor who have shitty practices and are just looking at you at that as that $150. Yeah. Yep. Yes, that's true. That's why you're supposed to shop around for your therapist. That's right. why you're supposed to do right. your due diligence and find out if this person's for you. Right. My rule of thumb is you go to three appointments. If it's still not clicking, it's mm-hmm. time to move on. Yeah. But I do it. I treat it like a TV show. I mm-hmm. watch three episodes. If I'm not into right. it after then that, it's just, it's yeah, not, it's we'll not find a me. different one. Mm-hmm. So, I do understand what you're saying. So while you're doing this, let's just say uh, Mm court-appointed therapy, um, did you just stick with this person because they were basically making you, uh, making them sign a sheet for you? So no, I didn't have to do any of that. It was it wasn't like court ordered or or anything. Um, But you couldn't leave the hospital without a a a scheduled therapist. So is that just the hospital? protecting themselves yeah, I, I would assume so okay. um right. so I had to meet it was like through a zoom call I had to meet with one of somebody from the hospital right because this is 2020 mm-hmm. oh. uh, uh no it was no. 2018 2018 yep so, oh they were doing zoom back then yeah so it was it might have been like the the psychiatrist or something within the hospital so I had to do a, a phone call with them and it was okay. Do you have any more of these thoughts? Are you, you know, when you get out of here, are you planning on and, mm-hmm. you know, do you have a set therapist? They wanted the name, they wanted the address, they wanted the business name. And, um, but I didn't have to report back to anybody saying, like, yes, I've, I've been religiously doing this. Okay. Um, so as you said, you, you need to shop around for who's the best fit for you. Right. And, uh, I just, to be honest with you, I wanted, I'm not a hospital person, nah. even if I'm sick, if I'm injured, I'm yeah. just, and I'm not a good patient. Um, <laughs> I don't think any of so, us really are. No. So I just, I picked the one that had an opening and I went, I think it was, it had to be within the week of that. I got out of the hospital. Okay. Mm-hmm week within that you got out of the hospital. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're doing the therapy. You yep. did it for a week or you did it. How long, how long did you do no, that for? So I want to say that I probably went to oh, a handful, maybe like four or five appointments. Oh, okay. And then um, actually not as many as I was anticipating. No. And then I, I, you know, I was kind of like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think something eye opening was it, it was it affected more people than I thought it was going to. Um, cause like I had mentioned, like, you know, it's that contradiction of people are going to be better off without me. And then here I am in this moment and I'm not thinking of those people. And then after this moment, these people are around me and I'm seeing the, the damage, the, the, the hurt that I've caused. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, I mean, my mother, you know, I love her to pieces. Um, she was, you know, t- trying to be supportive and, and everything. Do you need anything? Do you, you know, are you feeling okay? And um, it, it, I just didn't expect, like, my mom and my dad, like, my mom and my dad, of course, they're my parents. They love me. But it, it rolled over to, you know, I was working at the salon at the time. Um, it rolled over to my bosses there and my coworkers there. And, you know, it just... It, it, it was it was more than I expected. I didn't think people were going to really bat an eye at it, I guess. Yeah. And maybe that's my ignorance um, of just being like, okay, like, yeah, like this, this situation happened and now we, we can all move on. Well, I think it also has to do with part of the thought process mm-hmm. to get you to where you were. Mm-hmm. Right? You, not, not that you felt alone, mm-hmm. but maybe you didn't think that people 
thought of you in a specific way. And then when you get saved Mm -hmm. and now those people are around you, you, you see that they actually did care. Right. And it's almost like, it's almost, it's almost like you still get to see all of their like reactions and stuff but you weren't supposed to be there for those reactions. Right. And um and I, you're and you're like, "Oh wow." Like I don't know if you were thinking this way, but my thought process is now you're seeing it. You're like that you're like that fly on the wall right. listening to a conversation, but you're mm-hmm. in it and you're like, "Oh wow. These people actually did care about me." Right. It really did bother them. Right. And now, how do I deal with this uncomfortableness right. of seeing them upset but also almost walking on eggshells in a sense i'm because I'm, I'm sure people were very gingerly around yes you. yes you know that i don't know you know mm-hmm. don't rock the boat you know right. you know so what what was that like what was that like dealing with you know? yeah so um i remember it was i think it was it was a friday mm-hmm. um and i wanted to go back to work on tuesday I wanted, I wanted to go back to the salon on Tuesday and, you know, um, I eventually decided to take a week off from work. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, yeah, but it just, um, you know, I remember my bot, like my boss looking at me and she's like, you just look so sad, you know? And, and like my dad is, is there anything that you need? Is you just let me know I'm here? I'm pretty sure he took the week off with me as well. Um, we went up to the lake house at the time. It was just a lake house, but now it's, it's their main residence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, and, and my mom, like, I remember my mom like crying and, um, I wouldn't, in my experience, I wouldn't say that I felt as though that I was, I was walking on eggshells. No, I, no. I, yeah. uh, let me, let me correct they, myself. They were I, walking feel, on eggshells. I felt like they were walking on probably, eggshells around you. Probably to an extent. Um, right. because you know, they're, they're working through all these feelings and, yeah. Um, I guess I got annoyed with those feelings. I, I, this is, this is exactly what I was expecting. Yeah. Yes. Like I, you know, uh, because you just want them to be okay. Cause it, it's over. It, right. Hey, I'm here. And, yeah. and, 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 yeah. and, and the only reason I understand that is mm-hmm. because as an alcoholic, when mm-hmm. I quit drinking yep. three days later, I'm like, what is your problem? Right. Like what's it's, a, what's, I, it's, I it's over and done with. Over. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm good you know, now. Right. Yeah. You know, it, mine was a little bit more reoccurring, which is yeah. why people's trust dropped off. Okay. And that's why, you know, three days in they were like, yeah, you got to give us a lot more than that. Right. In, right. in your case, this is not a reoccurring thing. This is no. a one and done. Right. But you're almost at the level of not distrust mm-hmm. but, but you but, are but the way that people are going to act to you right. is almost like they were acting towards me on my 15th round of giving up alcohol right right, right? because it's such a serious thing it is it is you know, alcoholism is also serious but Absolutely. not as serious as this right and um i think too the, the difference between the two situations is is everybody wanted to be around me Mm-hmm. Right, and yeah, um, I'm not sure in your experience if people just kind of kept their distance. Oh, or... I, I mean, in my experience, my alcoholism pushed more people out of my life, mm-hmm. and I could see how this type of a situation they would just be like, right, which could almost be smothering. Exactly, where alcoholism leaves you lonely. Right, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you really choose the drug over over everybody, Mm -hmm. you know, and I know that you were choosing to not be here over everybody, but that's the, that's the, that's a big difference. All these people that were like, I could have helped. Right. They're still thinking that except now they get to go, I'm going to help. Right. Which is going to be a little overwhelming. Overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So, um, Looking back on it now, like I, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like my boss would from the salon would check on me and you know, my mom and my dad and you had, it was labeled as an allergic reaction. Um, yeah. So that's all because of the amount of pills that you, well, well, no. So that's, that's how I wanted it to be, um, referred to, Oh, you know, cause yeah. Cause I was, I was there. I was, I was at work. I was there. And then all of a sudden I'm just, I'm not. Mm. And then I'm back. Um, so 
I just, the severity of the situation, you can't be like, oh, like, you know, I'm leaving this event just to go see if my daughter's okay from an allergic reaction. Like, no, some, something happened like or like something happened to get me to where I was. Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember my dad being, again, very, very supportive. My dad is, is very supportive. Um, he's a tough cookie and it's all tough love, but it's coming from a good place. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he, he had said, whatever you want to refer to it, Tanya Marie, that's what we're going to do. Um, and I, I asked both of my parents, I said, I don't want my grandmother's knowing, I don't want Mm -hmm. my friends, my family, I don't want anybody knowing until I'm ready to have that conversation. And truthfully, a lot of people are going to see this and be like, oh, wow, I didn't even know. Yeah. Um, and that's your right. Yeah. They they don't need to know. And I think now I'm a little bit more open about it. Um, because that it's part of my story, you yeah. know, it's, it's part of who I am. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, and you shouldn't be ashamed of it. Just like you had your struggles. It's nothing to be ashamed of just because no. the average person doesn't, or not average person, but just because somebody doesn't experience it doesn't mean it's not real. That's right. Um, so as you were saying with like mental health earlier, I do think it's, it's almost glorified in a sense. Oh yeah. I mean, you, know, like, you, oh. you turn around and, and, and everybody is, right. is, is like, Oh, well I got, I got this, I got that. I got that. You right. know, it's, it's just become this normal excuse today. And that's right. Which is just irritating right. to anybody who has an actual mental illness. Right. Like OCD, uh, 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 depression mm-hmm. or any, the real, real mental illness. Right. It, we get offended when you're just throwing it right. around willy nilly. It's, right. it's ridiculous. Well, because a lot of people I find the you know their poor poor decisions. They'll mm-hmm. be like, oh well, you know, I was I was depressed or I was I was a shitty person to you because I I was feeling this way. Um, and I feel like a lot of people project that onto somebody else yeah. to to validate their their decisions and actions and 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 it's just not right. No. No, nope, um, because somebody with an with an addiction that recovered, obviously, and you know, with mental illness, it's just it's. I don't care that you swore at Susan and that because no. you were feeling overwhelmed, and now you have anxiety, or yeah, now you yeah. have depression, and because I know people that have anxiety, and I know people who who suffer greatly from it, and. And it's just for somebody to throw that like depression and anxiety and, and, you know, um, uh, addiction around just for, for their benefit in a situation. Um, I just think it's, it's just, it's wrong. Well, it's wrong. It's weak. Yeah. It's, it's it's really, really aggravating, irritating Mm -hmm. because I've had true depression. Yeah. I've had, uh, you know, I've had symptoms of bipolar ish issues, Mm -hmm. But I learned that most of my bipolarish issues um, was just me not controlling my anger. Right. And that's the thing. It takes time to figure that out. Right. And then once you realize, oh, okay, like I didn't have bipolarish issues. Right. I had alcoholism mm-hmm. that turned into anger. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was depressed. I was using a depressant. Mm-hmm. And then when I'm not doing what I want to be doing, I'm throwing a fit right. and I'm getting upset. Right. And there's the, the highs, the and lows, lows right. right there. And that's what a doctor looks at. And they go, oh, you have me, you might have bipolar issues. Right. So they medicate you for that. But in the actual, it's not actually, it's not actually mm-hmm. bipolarism. It's mm-hmm. alcoholism, right. depression, and it just turned into anger. Right. Right. But you're going to get those somewhat highs and lows. You're and- going to get those similar symptoms that somebody with bipolar has. Right. You know, those that because that's what they are. They're right. way up here and then, and then they're, they're way, way down, down here mm-hmm. and they're all over. You know what I mean? There's really no in between with right. them. It's it, up or down. And I was showing those type of symptoms and doctors misdiagnosed it. Right. Because supposedly there was bipolarism within my family somewhere. Okay. So, so they just kind of took that and ran with it. Right. right. And it's like, okay, well, you know, when, when you have actual depression and you don't want to get out of bed and mm-hmm. you don't want to do certain things, like that is extremely heavy. And people right. do not understand that. Right. You know, so when you're at the point where you're in a car and mm-hmm. you're taking a handful of pills. hmm that is the definition of depression. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, one hundred percent. 
Yeah. You know, when you're that low that you feel like everybody would be better without you, mm -hmm. that is true depression. Yeah. That is true mental illness. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. Right. But the way that you were going to deal with it was wrong. Was wrong. Was wrong. And so, I, but I understand. Right. I'm not saying that you're, you, you made the wrong choice. I'm, I'm just saying, like, Wow, it, to get to that point is mm -hmm. just, and and for me to be throwing it around to use it as leverage on people, right? I'm just like, wow, you know, I, I'm just thinking of myself as like a big piece of shit. Well, no, I you mean, know, but but you but know I what get I mean. it because because you, you're doing it to get something that, or you were were doing it to get something that you wanted, right? right? And, and I, then somebody else was doing it for a genuine reason. Right, but that's yeah, like I get throwing it. it around today, right? Yeah, I, so I get it. I was kind of one of those people back then. Yeah, but, my, but, but what I was going through masked all yeah, of that. And yeah. that's that's where my issue lied. And that's not where your issues lie. So now we're 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 doing good. We're talking, mm -hmm. we're talking to dad, we're taking a vacation, yep. we're taking some time off of work. Mm -hmm. So how are things uh, from whatever moment in time this is to when um, Ariana shows up? Attention, holiday shoppers. Are you looking for the perfect gifts for your loved ones this Christmas? Look no further than slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. With our incredible selection of trendy and unique clothing and accessories, We've got something for everyone on your list. And here's the best part. You can save an extra 10% off your entire purchase by using the promo code T-O-P-H-E-R before you check out. Why not spread the holiday cheer while saving money? At slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, we offer a wide range of items, including shirts, shorts, Swim shorts, beach towels, women's leggings, kids' tees, hats, socks, pins. There is even a full kit with a shirt, a hat, a pin, and socks, which is just incredible. There's even skateboards and winter jackets. Each product is beautifully designed with tattooed inspired and new school art, making them absolutely amazing pieces that stand out from the crowd. The quality of our products is second to none. Our hats feature heavy embroidering and a print underneath the bill. Plus, our selection is constantly changing with every season, so there's always something new and exciting to discover. Don't miss out on the perfect opportunity to give unique, high-quality gifts this holiday season. Visit slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com and remember to use promo code T-O-P-H-E-R at checkout for an extra 10% off your entire purchase. Happy shopping and have a wonderful holiday season. So, yeah, I, I have to say I'm the type of person that something happens and I move on. Yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, dates and dates and stuff don't really matter. Yeah, just a gist. Yeah, no. So, um, I I'd want to say it was it was probably quite some time until everybody felt comfortable around me again. Yeah. Not in a sense that I made them uncomfortable, like, but but to be like, okay, like she's okay. Like, yeah, I, like I don't have to check in on her. They're today. no longer walking on eggshells. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so from 2018 to 2020, um, before Aria was born, I was, I was fine. Everybody else was fine. Um, and I, I'd have to say during those, those years is when I needed to learn like, okay, like what, what is my point? Like not what is my point of being here, but like what is my point of okay, I'm I'm stressed, I'm overwhelmed, I need mm -hmm. to do like what's my my dad always re refers to it as temperature. Like what's my temperature? What can I give and what can I not give, or or what can I do or not do, or um. So even to this day, like I'm still learning. Like okay, like, no, I'm not going to do that, and I have no problem saying no. Right. Um. Or so that was a lot of okay. Like I'm sad, but I'm going to get out of bed and I'm going to go. For a walk. Okay. You know, um, just learning those cues. Because as you mentioned, depression can be debilitating. You know, mm -hmm. you have people who lay in bed for three months on end and, you know, they have gnats in their hair. It's like a giant dreadlock. Or, you know, they don't get up and shower or brush their teeth. Yeah. Or, you know, it's it's it takes a lot of, of 
a toll on your physical health as well. Yes. Um, so it was, it was learning what I was giving up that I should have been doing and doing it anyway. Um, so like I mentioned, I don't feel like going outside today. I'm going to go sit on my step and just get a little bit of sunlight, even if it's just for 10 minutes. Um, and just doing those things over time and, and being able to pull myself out of those thoughts and, you know, the, those days. Um, so looking back at it now, I'm, I'm a completely different person. Yeah. Um, you know, and, uh, I think it just, it's something that needed to happen to me. Um, because I'm a lot more empathetic towards people now. Um, not that I wasn't before, but I didn't care how somebody was. I was like, I don't care. Like, get over it. You know, yep. uh, you know, yep. and, um, that's a tough love kind of thing, but it's just, it's, you know, I'm more understanding when people say like, Hey, like, you know, I'm, I'm having a really tough time. Like, okay, I've, I've been there. I, I get it. Um, you know, I had a 12 year old the other day say, you know, I'm, my, my, I'm known as Sensei Ri at the school. Mm-hmm. Sensei Ri, like I, I tried. And, and I was like, okay, like, but you are, he- but you're here. Like you tried and, and it's getting down to the root of, as you mentioned, why, why, mm-hmm. why, what took you there? What brought you there? Um, and just the biggest thing is learning yourself with whatever you, whatever you have, whether you have anxiety and you need to, you know, sit down and read a book or, or take a couple deep breaths or sit in silence, you know, or you have depression where you need to, a lot of people work out. A lot of people do physical activity. Um, so it's, it's learning your little cues and, and what you need as a person to really get there. So when I had Aria, I was in a really good spot. That's awesome. Yeah. Yep. Um, she was a tough cookie from the beginning. <laughs> but I think I think it's definitely helped me um, be like the, the mom, the friend, the sister, um, that I am, I am today. So that's, that's, yeah. a, that is absolutely amazing. So my next, my next question for mm-hmm. you is then, so when all of this is happening, mm-hmm. you're, you're going through this and before Aria, yep. all of it, we're kind of rewinding again. That's okay. What, like, was there any, uh, drugs or anything involved in this or was this just you? So like, how, how, how do you, how did you, how did you get to that place? Was so, it- like I said, it it was a lot of for me in my experience. It was it was a lot of situations over over time, you know, um, that just kind of built okay. upon one another. It wasn't I wasn't under the influence of drugs okay. um, or alcohol or anything like that when I made that choice. Um, it was more of like I said, I don't I don't normally talk about things that make me feel upset. Okay, um, okay. I'm a very much like I compartmentalize. By the time, you know, something comes up, I'm over it. Okay. Um, so it was just a lot of little things that I didn't deal with that it, it just came out in such an explosive way. Like you, you, um, people with anger issues. Yeah. When, you know, you, you bottle things up and then you explode. Yeah. Um, it, it's... Mine just came out instead of anger. It came out in, in, in like pain and sadness. Okay. Um, and I think I used to be very quick to anger. Um, and actually in therapy. So anger is the easier emotion to deal with than sadness. Or, you know, um, and I, I could be wrong because I know you that you said you had your own experience with, with anger and, and stuff like that. Um, but it, it was a lot easier for me to get angry than it was to get sad. Yeah. Um, and... You know, I found that a lot of times, like, instead of me saying that I was upset and if I got angry, the people wouldn't ask, hey, Mm. are you okay? Hey, do you need anything? Um, So, as you mentioned, like, a lot of people want to want to help. And and it raises a lot of questions, you know, that that you want answered. What could I what could I have done different to stop Mm -hmm. them? You know, um, what what were the signs like you kind of back to like the people around you kind of backtrack in their minds and and try to pinpoint little things and a lot of the times it was I got I got angry and I would explode and then you would back people would back away Mm -hmm. um and so it was it's a lot of self self uh, isolation yep that you do um so there are no signs. Somebody like you mentioned Twitch, yeah. he's dancing, he's smiling, he's joking, he's laughing, he has a beautiful wife, children. Um and that was the persona. And you just don't know. You don't yeah. know. 
Yeah, so I was I was just curious because like I I know that some of these type of situations happen because of uh, like drug use yep. and stuff like that, and I know that you uh, went with uh, went through a lot mm-hmm. um, recently um, uh, with Ariana and 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 the father yes. and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and um, I'm kind of trying to get to that, but yep. I wasn't sure if um, addiction was one of the, the issues. underlying the, yeah. yeah yeah the underlining issue um for all of it but it just now that uh you know we're talking um, mm-hmm. i'm starting to see um the leverage that was uh possibly tried to be used against you yeah um, it was okay okay mm-hmm. all right so okay so there was yeah i get it now okay yeah all right yeah. all right all right i i just i i like I said, I do this on purpose. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know you. Mm-hmm. I want to know your story. Yep. And at the same time, I don't want to know anything when you sit down with me. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I, I've been doing this with everybody. I, mm-hmm. I just feel like um, the format's a little bit better when I don't know. Um, right. It's, it's know, a genuine. I don't want to, I don't want to sound scripted, but right. I also don't want to sound stupid. But right. <laughs> it's, it's a balance. I mean, yeah. I put up <laughs> over 190 of these things. Yeah. So at yeah. some point in time, I sound pretty stupid. It. No, so you're fine. A, <laughs> but but so now 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 you've had Ariana. Mm-hmm. Things are going well. Yep. Um, you're still working at the salon at this time. Um. So no. No. Uh, nope. I worked at the salon for about three years, okay. and um, I came back to the school permanently at two, in 2019. Oh, okay. So yep. just before you had her. Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Ooh, okay. Sorry. No, you're fine. You can. Don't worry about it. It just, can take just it. Headbutt the the yeah, mic yeah. Real You're fine. Quick. You're fine. It can take yeah. it. It can take it. Um, but yeah. So now you're you're back at PMA. Mm-hmm. You're you, you you got Ariana. Yep. Yeah. Things are going good. Yep. So lead us into the next struggle that you 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 had. Um, I don't know if there's anything still going on. No. Nope. Okay. So this is over and done, mm-hmm. and you can speak freely. Yeah. So when um okay. when initially uh we had talked about you know me coming on and, and talking yeah. about the situation um I, I was very much immersed in the in the court process. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So she was about four months old. Mm-hmm. Um. You know it was. I had a, I had an emergency C-section. It was the height of COVID. Oh, um, Jesus. Yeah. You know, yeah. I could I could only have one person in the room, and at the time that was Arya's father. Um, I will say, you know, he has had his own experiences, uh, which we can get to. Yeah. Um, but I think he also needed that to be where he is well, now. To be fair, mm-hmm. and, and I know I'm sure everybody's heard this a million times. Yep. You're never going to fix yourself until you're ready to fix yourself. Exactly. And you know what leads mm-hmm. us all to fixing ourselves? It is something traumatic. Something tr- traumatic mm-hmm. actually happening. Right. You know? Right. M- my addiction to alcohol put me in a place where I was Ubering people and drinking while I was Ubering. Gotcha. I didn't get arrested. Yeah. I got pulled over, though. Mm-hmm. That was the umpteenth time yep. that this something had almost go, that had something had happened okay. while I was drinking and driving. Yep, and it was the first time I didn't have I didn't get arrested. I didn't get anything. Okay, so I dropped my passenger off and I chose to quit drinking. Really, that was your that was, that was your final that was the final, final straw. straw. Okay, everybody has to go through something right to finally make that decision. Right, why? I have no idea, but we right. don't seem to want to change until, until we see the end mm-hmm. coming. Right. And for you, it was, you were knocking on the door. Yeah, it you was know close. What I mean? It so, was close. So it's like, that is what it takes. Yeah. So whatever he was going through, mm-hmm. he had to get to this place to finally maybe realize that it was time for him. Yeah. But unfortunately, Mm -hmm. a little too late. Yeah. You know what I mean? So going back to what you said, it it was the court because of COVID, everything was super backed up. So even getting a a normal custody schedule for for Aria took about 
Uh, maybe a year and a half. And that was the um, norm. And that was the norm. They were they were a year and a half backed up on everything. Uh, yeah. So it was, you know, court dates booked way out in the future. And I'm not going to lie to you. It, it was it was very nasty between the two of us. Um, mm-hmm. I played my own part. Um, you know, he played his part. And you hear these crazy things where we almost, as people, as the two of us, needed that mm. to be where we are now. Oh, okay. You know, so we're civil. We communicate really well for Aria. You know, she's very loved by everybody. Um, but it took us a long time. A long time. Um, well, not for nothing. Nothing is done easily. No. Nothing happens overnight. No. There's no, no magical pill for anything no. on this Sometimes planet. Sometimes I wish there was. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Me too. I wish yep. I could have taken that non-alcoholic and, pill yep. and been done with it. Uh-huh. But, you know, like everything, uh, you know, working out, mm-hmm. getting fit, getting healthy, losing weight, the, none of it. It right. all takes time, time. work. That's it. Yeah. And that's all you can do to put it in mm-hmm. because after time and work is passed, it's that's right. when you start seeing results. Right, right. Um, so with the situation with, with Aria's father, um, you know, I now have I have full custody of, of mm-hmm. her. Um he still sees her, you know, he sees her twice a week. Um but like you had mentioned earlier with your, you know, your alcoholism and, and addiction, it, it, I trust him to a certain extent. Right. Of course. You know, and um, it's just something that has to be worked towards. Yes. Uh, like, like you said, um, over, t- over time. And um, it just going back to because I remember during the court process he did try to use my my attempt against me. Um, mm-hmm. His and his him and his attorney asked for my medical records from yep. two, from 2018, um, which I knew exactly what they were going for. They were trying to paint me as an unfit mother, and mm-hmm. it doesn't matter how many time has gone by or right. or what. Um, but they were trying to use that as as leverage, of course. Um, you know and. Same thing that happened recently, you know, it's, it's a, it was a year ago now, um, with him, you know, it's just, it was a lot of like push and pull and, and, you know, I remember everybody, are you okay? Do you need anything? And I was like, guys, like, I- I'm okay. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. Like, um, you know, and, and now a lot of people that have tried these things or that, that have an experience or even people that are just going through court processes in general, mm. you know, feel comfortable coming to me and just saying like, Hey, like, how did you handle this? Like, how did you go about this? How did it work best for, you know, for you and Aria? And, and it's just, it, I feel like something positive has come out of it yes. because you have that experience. Yeah. Um, so definitely grateful in a weird way, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah. So when when you're so is 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 he out and about or yes yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so he good. is um he okay. he has supervised visits with her currently okay. um and you know eventually goal is to be able to send her and you know they have have a great time and they have fun um it's just not right now. Yeah. You know, um, and I'm not, I'm not holding anything against him. It's just my comfort level, you know, of, it's my temperature, right. you okay. know, as, as I mentioned, like, okay, like I'm, I'm, you're ready to be here and I'm ready to be here much like, okay, like to him, like that situation happened and, and I've moved on, like I'm ready to move on. And I guess relating it back to how people felt around me, like, okay, yeah, that situation happened, but I'm not ready to move on. Yeah. You know, and it's it's not like a leverage thing where I throw it in his face or, you know, well, you did this, so you can't have that. Um, it's it's more of like a I understand where you're coming from. I get why you want more with her. Mm-hmm. But right now that's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. And, and I think that's that's fair. You know, mm-hmm. um, I've, I've I've been off of alcohol now for a little over seven years. September fourteenth oh, was seven. Yeah, and it and it feels really good. Yeah. But there's, you know, I think there's a lot less people mm-hmm. that feel that way towards me now. Okay. But it took seven years. Yeah. To, yeah. To to get to a point. 
where now everybody is really like, oh, shit, he's actually doing this. Right, right. You know what I mean? And But it, but at first I was like, hey, I'm doing it. Right. And then, you know, a couple of years went by and some people were like, okay, I can really see the work you're doing. All the right. closer people, my wife, right. close friends, they could really see the work. But it wasn't until like five years into it where my mom, mm-hmm. my dad, my sister, my my other relatives, aunts and uncles yeah. and stuff like where they actually were like, oh, shit, he's doing He's changing. This. Yeah. Yeah. And it was. That's to be expected. Yeah. You know, when mm-hmm. you when you do certain things, and I'm not exactly sure what his thing was, yep. but when you do certain things, it's going to take people a while. Yeah. Because trust is one of those things where if it's lost... Uh, it's hard to rebuild. It's really hard mm-hmm. to rebuild that. Mm-hmm. People are always going to be push off or standoffish. Yeah. You know? And I think um, the the hardest thing is, is like, I know that one of the things that I struggled with after is, like, I was, guys, I'm good. You mentioned three days after. Guys, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm ready to move on. Um, I think my thing was being patient with the people around me. Yeah. Because um, I just, you know, I want you to be able to trust me that I can go to the store by myself and I'm not going to do anything crazy. Right. You know, or I'm sure like you with your friends and family, like guys, like I, I want you to be able to be around me and be comfortable. But it, it is, uh, I had to be patient mm-hmm. for like there, like, and understand where they were coming I from. I did too. Yeah. I did too. And I didn't want to be, mm-hmm. you know? No, cause that's so hard. Patience, it's, patience, patience is the hardest thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Yep. Now, um, I wanted to ask you something, but I totally forgot what it was. Oh, it'll come back to me. Really? All right, yeah, all right. yeah. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. You can uh, yeah. definitely, if, if it comes back to you, you can yeah. definitely interrupt and yeah. uh, say it. So, but no, I just, I, I think all of this and you going through that mm-hmm. and then a couple of years later having to go through that court, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. in a, in a way I feel like you getting through that made you that much stronger when you had to deal with the other situation. Yeah. With with the with your kid and, yeah. and, and the and the father and stuff like mm-hmm. that. You know, you know, maybe and and, and it's, it's kinda weird to say, but I always think everything I say is weird. So anyway, no. <laughs> um, <Sorry>. but <laughs> I say some weird stuff sometimes. Yeah, so. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Like mm-hmm. you, you, you almost. If you didn't go through that, I'm I'm almost like wondering if you would have been as capable to get through the other thing, or maybe the other thing would have never happened because you you were still. You know what I mean? Like if you yeah. if you didn't if it, if that incident didn't happen to mm-hmm. you that day, what what do you, do you believe that you would have been as strong, or maybe you would have been on a completely different path? You know, I don't yeah. know. Isn't that so interesting to think about a little is. bit? So I I will say like I like I had mentioned, um, I think it needed to happen to me. Yeah. Um, and to some people that might sound absolutely insane because other things can happen to you where you're it makes you stronger right like you don't need to take it to a hundred percent yeah um but i think it helped me through that the like the court process because i'm i my like my emotions like yeah. like okay like because it's it's yeah like you go into court and and somebody's saying something about you and and granted like i said we were very equally nasty to one another yeah um i was not good to him you know, um, and it's something that, you know, we have, have kind of squashed, I guess. Um, and I'm very thankful for that because most people wouldn't, um, you know, but yeah, if I didn't go through that, I don't know how I would have handled my, my daughter. Cause it's almost it's like a lot of the people that I, I I speak with, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they have, uh, addiction or, or, or divorce and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's, it's always one incident, Mm -hmm. right? It's one massive incident, but it's one incident where you technically went through two. Yeah. Yeah. Almost back to back. Yeah. Yep. So, so it's like, man, you would, would one, I, I believe one benefited the other. Yeah. In a sense, because Mm -hmm. you, you were way down, then you had to get, you had to come back, mm-hmm. and that made you strong. Right. And then you get this, 
and you get through that. Right. And now you got custody. You got all these things yeah. going on because you kept your composure. You kept yeah. your head straight mm-hmm. and you were focused. Yep. And now you're even stronger. Yeah. So you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's like almost a double. Yeah. Which is which <laughs> yeah. is a lot that you had to go through. Right. But being where you are today, right? You you've got to feel the difference. Yeah. So I am I am not the same person. Yeah. Um. You know, a, a lot of times I was very. We live in a world of validation. Right. Yes. Whether that's social media, like likes or comments or, or anything. like, And I'm not saying that that's for everybody, um, but we live in a world full of validation. Like, hey, you're doing a good job, you know, and, and a lot of people, if they don't get that. They feel less than. Yeah. Um, or like, hey, I appreciate you. Or, hey, like it's it's validation in different ways. Words of affirmation, you know, acts of service, everything like that. And a lot of times um, if I wasn't getting like a, hey, you're doing good. Or, you know, hey, I, I appreciate your friendship or or something like that. It, I would let it get to me. Or if somebody like, you know, constructive criticism, I wasn't okay with. Like I would, you know, jump to being angry. Oh, I'm not, yeah. I'm not like that. Like, you know, how dare you say that to me? And uh, now I'm definitely the type of person where a lot rolls off my shoulders. That's that's awesome. Um, Yeah, it's... And I still have my moments. I am not perfect by any means. And I don't think we're supposed to be perfect. No. And I don't, uh, I don't think so one iota. I don't think anything is supposed no, to be perfect. No. Um, everything is a lot of work. Yeah. And uh, it's just the way life is. And yeah. it's how you look at it and how you deal with it. Right. That's going to make the biggest difference. Right. To right. you. Exactly. And it's not about anybody else. No. And I think a lot more people would be a lot happier if they stopped seeking for validation elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, I agree with that. Yeah. But so subscribe and like. No, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now since since you threw it in there conveniently. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, I definitely think that situation and, and like the court process when things were being said, like I was like, okay, like, you know. If that's what you need to do, yeah. fine. Um, and like I said, so, so, so grateful that we're we're on good terms now. And, and you know, for, for Aria and for us, because I'm more at ease, you know, and I'm sure he's more at ease knowing like, okay, like we can have a conversation and it's not going to get nasty. Well, I do have to say that like, this is one of the more extreme, because you, you, you weren't married, right? No. Okay, so nope. you're not, not divorced, but just nope. separated, yep. I guess, is the word we could use. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I hear more of this today between mm-hmm. separated and or slash uh, div- divorced couples yeah. than the old story of, like, when people first started getting, like, Divorce. Dor- divorce is, I think, 52, 55% of marriages yeah. today. It's, yeah. It's, it's over the 50% mark yep. at this point. Um, and back when uh, we first started hearing of it, of, it, of it, it was only like 10%. Right. And all those ones were like, and it was like, they were just separated, uh, kids yeah. living in two families, mm-hmm. you know, the only benefit was two Christmases, yeah. if you celebrated Christmas, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that, mm-hmm. you got multiple birthdays, right? but they were always, it was, it was like the mom would bash the dad when the kids were there, mm-hmm. and then the dad would bash the mom while the yeah. kids were there, and you used to hear that a lot, Yeah. and today, you know, 30 years later, yeah. Um, now you hear more of this type of scenario, yeah. where they they get divorced and the parents are still uh kosher with each other yeah. they're not you know mm-hmm. and they just you know they 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 share the kids evenly yeah. everything's good and everybody's getting along mm-hmm. and it's 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 very uh it's very interesting to me to hear the script flip yeah you know? so um T- to be honest, we, him and I are better off as, you know, friend, friends mm-hmm. than we were as a couple. Yeah. Um, and I think we both know that. Um, but a lot of times, so he comes from a, a split household, and, and so do I. And, okay. um, you yeah. know, using a kid as, like, a weapon, yeah. so to speak, um, only does damage to the kid. 
Mm. You know, it's yeah. it's not affecting me. It's not affecting him. Um, so just she's not leverage. Right. You know, um, I'm not going to keep her from you because I want something. But and, that's the way it used to be. Right. And um, you don't hear of it very often anymore. No. Um, and I think kids are going to benefit from that yeah. uh, just because. Yeah, you're not a pawn in mom and dad's game, you yeah. know, and um, yeah, it's, it's just we've come a long way. I, I, I absolutely see yeah. it and I definitely believe it. It's just yeah. that, you know, I start thinking about it and I have like no idea mm-hmm. what this world is like. Yeah. My parents are still married. Yeah. You know but what that's I mean? okay. And, and, and me and my wife are still married yeah. and we just never had it. We didn't have any kids. Yeah. But so it's like when I hear of these things, I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? I have no experience in this whatsoever. Yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not upset by that. Yeah, no. But at the same time, I'm, I'm just so curious mm-hmm. as to like, you know, how, how, how these things happen. And it's like, man, it used to be divorce was very minimal and right. now it's over 50%. And now right. you hear of more of this co-mingling mm-hmm. between the separated couples and yep. It just become it just became so much more common today. Yeah, that um, I do think it's in a better place. You know, yeah, because I think it's important to know that you know for the kids to know that even though mom and dad aren't still together, um, it's it's not their fault. Right. So I actually watched um, a documentary or or like a little like YouTube video of uh, somebody interviewing kids from divorced parents and Mm -hmm. you know um mom and there was one little boy that said mom and dad look so happy before me and it was like like that kind of like you know oh wow it hit me hit me pretty good um because i think it's just it's not necessarily the kid um but it's it's hard, right? Yeah. Like like having a child is hard. Raising a, a child successfully together is hard. There's ups and downs in every relationship, every mm. friendship, every everything. Every relationship. Um, it's just a matter of whether is, is us staying together going to help her or is it going to hurt her in the end? Right. You know, like if we're at each other's throats 24-7 and she's around this, like I don't. Nobody wants their kid thinking like, oh, like, is that how I'm supposed to be treated? Or, oh, is, is you know, is this normal? Yeah. Um, so I don't think, yeah, it's, it, it's definitely different. It seems to me from mm-hmm. my observation from a very far distance. Yeah. It seems to me today um, the, your, 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 your generation, yep. right? Um, uh, it seems to me that you all learned from your parents' mistakes, in a sense. Like, yeah. Like, like, I'm not saying that Tim and your mom, they had, like, a dispute or something. I'm just saying yeah. your, your age bracket. Right. The, those parents mm-hmm. possibly did the pawn with the kids and right. did certain things. Right. And then you got older mm-hmm. and you're like, this was wrong. Right. So... If this is to ever happen to me, right, we're gonna do this differently, right. And now you're all setting the new bracket, and yeah. you realize that hey, the I was the kid and I got hurt, mm-hmm. so we're gonna make sure we don't hurt the kids because right. it it was it seemed like back then it was the parents only caring about the parents, anyways. Yeah, in a sense, so, in a, in, you know what I mean. And it seems like evolution as mm-hmm. time has gone on. Yeah. We've learned from our mistakes mm-hmm. and we're trying to do better. Yeah. Oh, weird. That's yeah. weird how that oh, works. Oh, it's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> what? Um, I will say, you know, my parents did a very good job when it came to us. Right. You know, um, and it's just, there's no handbook. No. Like you don't leave the hospital and they say, here you go. Here's your handbook on yeah. how to handle all these situations. Um, it's just parenting is hard. Mm-hmm. Family is hard. Mm-hmm. It, you know, life is not easy. And I just, I don't think holding something against somebody like the incident with Arya's father or the incident with me or, you know, your addiction. I don't think holding that above somebody or against somebody is really going to do any anybody no, any good. No, no. Um, you know, so, yeah, Arya's dad and I did not work. And, you know, she was very young when we split. Um, and she's a very happy little kid. 
Yeah. You know, well, so I think this message needs to be heard more. Yeah. Not even not not just your story that you told us today, but yeah. this right here, yeah. I think, is important because I believe there's a lot of people that are just where they are because they're comfortable. Yeah. And they're not making the right choices. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're not deciding to do what's gonna be best for them right. or their children. They're right. just doing what they know. Right. Um, uh, and, and I think that happens a lot today, um, especially since um, the way the world is and the way everything is today. Uh, yeah. You know, most people are still stuck at home because mm-hmm. they can't even afford rent. So right. you have to deal with that on top of everything, everything else, else going on. Going on. Yeah. So I do think that this message of being able to uh, identify that Mm-hmm. And separate from it, yeah. But co-mingle mm-hmm. to keep the child happy. Yep. Um, I don't think it's actually discussed enough. I don't no. think enough people are talking about things like this, right? Um, you know, they're stuck in a bad relationship, a mm-hmm. bad job, a bad whatever, yeah. and that 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 child suffers because they don't know how to do anything else because they are comfortable they're comfortable and when we get comfortable Mm -hmm. that's when shit goes wrong right and that's why i've always told everybody since i started this thing you Mm -hmm. have to make yourself uncomfortable to almost all the time right if you're getting comfortable Mm -hmm. you need to find a way to get rid of that comfortableness because that comfortableness will suck you in Mm -hmm. and it will hold you right back from moving forward and doing anything else right it's good to be comfortable with certain things but yeah. when it comes down to it, if you're just going this in and out, in and out, and you're mm-hmm. expecting change, it's never going to happen. It's never going to happen if you're comfortable. Right. It only right. happens when you get uncomfortable. Exactly. When you make a move, when you actually do the action to do something. Right. And that's going to make everybody uncomfortable. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I think a lot of people don't do things because of how other people are going to react or they don't, too. they don't say things because of how other people are going to react. Um, and I think my biggest learning lesson, and I I actually learned it from my brother, um, is a lot of times when you do something for yourself and somebody reacts negatively, Mm -hmm. it's a projection of them, not you. That's correct. You know, and, um, it's really hard to separate that in the moment. It, it is. But as you, as you, as a, as the person, like for me, Mm -hmm. I can see it. Right. As soon as somebody just jumps off to the negative yeah i'm like oh you're just portraying yeah you're you're just, you're, you're speaking from your heart right. or your judgment yeah, it, yeah. Like, but it takes a lot of time to see to that to see that and because understand i had to that. deal with my own shit mm-hmm. first the only way i was even capable of starting to let go of my anger was that i had to let go of all the people that hurt me right that i was holding on to that right. i was angry at right and if you don't let go of that, which is very uncomfortable to do because mm-hmm. it's so easy to hate them. Yeah. And it's your fault. It's this person's right, fault. To point the finger. And then you're like, but you're stuck feeding that anger. You're right. stuck right. in that. And it, it, it may not feel comfortable, but it's a comfortable. It's a comfortable feeling. It's a comfortable feeling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was easy for me to portray everything wrong that happened to me along mm-hmm. the 20 years of my alcoholism. It was yeah. so easy to point to all these people. Right. Right. But within the last seven years, I stopped thinking of them. Yeah. Because it was a waste of energy and mm-hmm. time. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't as angry anymore. Yeah. So you you have to be willing to get uncomfortable to, to then bring on something else that will feel comfortable. Right. Right. But right. it's going to be a better comfortable. Exactly. You know, I, I just, I, I, that's why I love jujitsu so much. Jujitsu always, I'll go in there one day and I have a great day. Mm-hmm. And I go in the next day. And you get smashed. And I get smashed. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, what the yeah. fuck was that? Yeah. Yeah. I, Let me do my technique that I just learned. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah. and in my brain, I'm like, uh-huh. I'm like, uh, I'm such a letdown. You know what I mean? Because it's like, hard. Your self talk is hard. It's 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 really tough because mm-hmm. sometimes you look at that belt and those stripes and you yeah. go, maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. Either 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 they're wrong or I'm just disappointing them right now. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. you get into these battles inside your head, mm-hmm. but that's why I love it so much because yeah. you go through those emotions, the ups and downs, in one week. Exactly. 
And it's from class to class, com- yeah. completely different <laughs> uh-huh. every time. So you're mm-hmm. always uncomfortable, right, on those mats, right. You Whether may find mentally or physically. You, you may find a flow. You <laughs> mm-hmm. may find a comfortable zone that you're yeah. good in. Mm-hmm. But eventually, you're gonna get well, yeah. you're gonna get tossed out of that because mm-hmm. if you play into somebody else's game, yep. Well, yeah. you might have some holes in your game, and you don't know that e- they're there. Exactly. You know exactly. And, and, and so everything that I do. Even in my my new position today, I'm mm-hmm. literally changing my schedule like every month. Yeah, it's completely different. It's always uncomfortable. Yeah, and I'm in a new store all the time. Yeah, and it's it's just always constant, constant change, change, change. I can't get comfortable. Right. That's good. Right. Right. Because you're not going to achieve anything in your comfort zone, right? No. Um. Now I remember what I wanted to ask yes. you. Yeah. So you had mentioned being angry, right? And then yes. people thought it was like a sign of like you being bipolar and, yes. and whatnot. Um, do you think you were really angry or were you like masking or trying to like mask the other emotions that you were feeling? I was angry at the world. Okay. I was very angry. And when I got drunk and mm-hmm. when I got blackout drunk, yep. that anger would just come right out. Okay. So I was just... F- holding on to all of it okay. um i i was holding on to everything mm-hmm. and then when i got drunk i was capable of allowing it to come out because then yeah. i could wake up the next day and be like ah that wasn't me gotcha that was the alcohol. i don't remember yeah uh, mm-hmm. i mean i barely remember a lot of things yeah. i the only way that i've even been capable of telling half of the stories that i've told on this podcast mm-hmm. is because they've been told to me to you okay I, I wasn't sure if it was like a somebody did something that like you know you were hurt and then you got angry because you were hurt so i wasn't sure oh i mean i i was i was rooming with a crackhead and i had i went to jail during that Mm -hmm. and uh then all my stuff got stolen so i wanted him dead yeah um i mean there was just so many people that have robbed me over the years but when i when i look at it and it's not like robbed at gunpoint like but just just taking something from whether it's your house or yeah but i would hold on to everybody Mm -hmm. that stole from me took things fucked me over yeah you know all these things but then i was like wait a minute yeah you were a complete drunk right so at the end of the day did these people take advantage of you yes they did right but did you allow them to take advantage of you because you were screened you were blacked out yeah yes you did right so is it really their fault that they took an opportunity that you mm-hmm. handed them. Right. I'm right. not saying that it, 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 it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right. Mm-mm. But I see opportunities all the time. Right. And I used to see opportunities when I was drinking mm-hmm. that were negative opportunities, but I right. would take them because I saw them. Right. That's all I did to them. I gave them a bad opportunity mm-hmm. to rip me off because yeah. they saw that I was going to jail. They right. saw that they wasn't going to remember that shit in the morning. Mm-hmm. They saw these things, and I brought those opportunities to right. them. I gave them. I opened the door to yeah to, to to hurt me exactly. And then I turned around and was like, I can't believe they hurt me. Yeah, but yeah, that's the cycle mm-hmm. we go through as addicts. Because at the end of the day, for me, mm-hmm. the only thing I cared about was having that drink. Right. So as long as I got to go back to my drink. You were fine. I was fine. Yep. But then the drink would allow the emotions to come out and we'd go through the damn cycle again. Same, same, same. Mm -hmm. So a lot of my anger issues were built into that. Gotcha. But the problem with anger is that it sticks with you. Mm -hmm. So when you start figuring yourself out and you Mm -hmm. start fixing things. Right. That anger has a way of coming out. Mm-hmm. when you don't even know it's there mm-hmm. and then you have to deal with it. Right. And that has been probably the most difficult thing that I've been working mm-hmm. on since I quit alcohol. Yeah. Like I know right now I can go to a party. I can go to a wedding. I can go to it's a so bar. It's so easily accessible. It's, it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's all around me. Right. The first two years were very difficult. Okay. Now mm-hmm. doesn't even phase me. Yep. My anger mm-hmm. still comes out today. Yeah. It still yeah. gets me. When my computer fails, when something right. goes wrong, when when Hulu will not select <laughs> the item yeah, that I selected. That you want. <laughs> yeah. We get a little angry. Get a little angry. <laughs> yeah. But that's just, it's. 
but that's all that's left now. Right. I've been working on it. Mm -hmm. So, and just figuring out why I'm angry. Right. And ang anger is okay. It's, it's oh, not, it's a great emotion. Exactly. It's not, it's not a negative thing. Uh, I think anger is, is only detrimental when it starts being like placed elsewhere. Right. Yeah. Um, so on a TV, on a computer, like whatever. But if, if like you said, if, I give you an opportunity and you take that opportunity and I'm mad at you for it. That's, that's misplaced. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I think like just understanding the role we play in our, in our own suffering, yeah. right. Uh, is, is huge. It, it really is. It's giant. Yeah. And when you start to realize that you mm -hmm. all of a sudden, uh, you, you realize that you are, you're not alone, first of all. Right. Everybody is dealing with this on a different level. Right. Uh, whether it's addiction, uh, contemplating suicide, yeah. uh, uh, divorce, separating, children, everything yeah. we've just talked about today, mm -hmm. everybody is dealing with this on some level. Right. And it just, when you find your way to deal with it, mm -hmm. you're going to end up finding so many different layers to all of it oh, it's yeah. not okay this is my anger and and these are the people i'm angry at and when i get rid of them i'll be fine I'll be i'm fine. not gonna be i'm not gonna be angry i'm gonna be happy right and and that's the thing that uh uh my new camera set up sorry guys um but so that's the thing mm -hmm. that i've come to realize right that like yeah, I understood that this is going to be a long road, mm -hmm. but I didn't understand how many layers yeah. I have to always and constantly still yeah. go through mm -hmm. because I'm like, you know, why am I getting this way? Why am I getting that way? What's right. going on? Why am I feeling this way? You know, right. I like to smoke a, a pot a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I like it when I get that level of anxiety mm -hmm. from smoking Okay, because I know it's something going on with me yeah and it's it it's actually opening the door a little bit yeah and it's like just, hey hey why, hey, why do i at, feel this way look at yeah. this mm -hmm. because i'm telling you right now you look at this and you're gonna figure out why you're feeling this way right now right. and that uncomfortableness mm -hmm. i feel comfortable in right i like yeah. that and and i think a lot of people too use like the comfort zone as, as an excuse like you mm -hmm. know say somebody has a reaction or you know they everybody has had an experience whether it's on the low end of things or the high end of things right to to one extreme to the next and I think a lot of people use it as an excuse Yes. because for me, I could be the shittiest person in the world and I can be like, you know what? I tried this mm -hmm. and, and I could use that as an excuse. Hey, hey, I used to be a fucking alcoholic. Like I, I know, I know. And, and this is why I'm like that. And I think it takes a really, uh, it takes a lot of work to it, not. You're a stronger person right. when you don't default to that. Exactly. Exactly. When you, when you take, um. When you take responsibility yeah. for your actions, mm -hmm. for what you've done, yeah. and for the work that you've put in to be in a better place, yeah. that's way, way harder. Than, than just, just saying, that's, oh, oh, I got anxiety. Yeah, I am who I am. That's it. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't change. I, I can't am, change I, this. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just who I am. Be Instead of saying, yeah. you know, I'm going to work on that. Right. You and know? that's the thing. Everybody, you know, when, you, when I hear somebody say that they can't change... It's um, such bullshit. It's, it's you don't so, want to. It's so frustrating mm -hmm. because literally every single day, everything is changing. Everything. Everything can change. Mm -hmm. So if everything can change. But you're the same. <laughs> yeah. Something you, seems off here. You, you can definitely yeah. change. You can yep. change the way that you are. You can change the way that you don't like being. Right. If you don't like it and you're unhappy mm -hmm. with yourself. Yeah then the only person that's going to change that is you. Exactly. And Nobody else has the power to do so. And that's where the traumatic situation comes in. You right. can either change yourself, you can figure it out mm -hmm. and change yourself before something happens. Right. Because when something happens, it it's could a, be too right. late mm -hmm. or you will change. Because right. that, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. that, and I've, I've, I've done some stupid, stupid shit. I've yeah. told all the stories about my alcoholism. Mm-hmm. But it, I didn't realize it was a, a 20 year span. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. That was brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Awful. But I had way worse things happen. Yeah. You know, um, uh, one of the, one of the worst things, and I'm going to repeat it just because I, I don't think you've heard it. But no, that's okay. The, and this still didn't change me. Okay. 
But I was being, uh, I was riding my bike. I was all over Penacook. I was, uh, you know, stopping at liquor stores, stopping at uh, Chinese food restaurants, just hammering away, hammering mm-hmm. away. I'm in the middle of a fight with a girlfriend at the time. Yep. And I, I've got my 40 cal in my backpack. Yep. And I'm riding my bike up Borough Road in Concord, New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. And uh, she pulls behind me and she's like, kind of nudging me a little bit like okay. she didn't hit the bike but, but she was, she was close, close enough. enough yeah so i'm yelling and screaming and i'm like you need to back up and yeah. then i reach into my backpack yep. i pull out the 40 cal yeah and i put it at the windshield Ooh, lord <laughs> yeah and i don't know what happened but in that very moment mm-hmm. i decided to lift it up and i popped off too really right in the middle broad daylight broad daylight on it on your bike and I look as soon as I pulled the trigger once and I and I looked over at the gas station, you see all the heads swivel because yeah. the gas station was loaded with people. Yeah. I popped it off again. I threw it. I, I, I turned off into like a wooded area. Yep. I'm laughing hysterically because you I would have to say I'm about a fifth or a fifth and a half in. OK. Um, so it's not registering in your brain. At oh, God. At that no. time. I'm. I'm Gone. I'm, I'm half gone yeah. and it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah. Yep. And I'm I'm planning on going back and still drinking. Like yeah. this was my life. Mm-hmm. I, I would go through a handle and a half a day. Okay. Um and it, that's just quantity level. It's yeah. not the actual like I'm not sitting on a bottle of vodka. It's all different it's, bottles. Right. But right. it's a it's a handle and a half a day. Mm-hmm. And I just I pull I, I jump the bike and I'm like playing with the gun and I, I I heard the car and I think I hear crying but I'm yeah. not paying attention to it all I'm right. laughing yeah and I was like all right I gotta just take the clip out and I put that in my pocket I go boom and I put one into a tree oh lord she thought I capped myself so okay. I put the I put the gun back in. Mm-hmm. I get it back on my bike. I come out on the street, and yep. I am hysterically laughing. You just think it's the funniest thing in the world. Yeah, I just yeah. put a forty cal in a tree. <laughs> yeah. I pop two up in yeah. broad daylight. Just normal shenanigans. I am yeah. just having a blast. <laughs> yeah. Who gets to say that they did that? Yeah, I yeah. do. And so I ride my bike. Now she is hysterically crying. Yeah. I ride my bike back. Mm-hmm. I uh, bring my bike upstairs. I go back into my apartment. I clean the entire gun. Yeah. Pull it all apart. Clean yeah. it. Put it back together. Put it back in its lockbox. And I friggin' locked it up. Yeah. And I put it away. I forgot I had my brass knuckles on me. So they're oh, in my back pocket. Yeah. I come back down with my bike. I'm having a fucking grand old yeah, day. Yeah, you're just living your life. I'm just yeah. having fun. <laughs> yeah. Come back downstairs. Uh-huh. And I look uh, to my left. Or, yeah, my right. And I see a guy with a shotgun and Kevlar helmet. Mm-hmm. I, go, huh. I looked over here. I see another one. I looked over there and there. Oh, and they there. had you surrounded. It was five of them. Yeah. Coming up slowly. The yeah. guy in the center made eye contact with mm-hmm. me. And he's like, what's your name? And I go, Christopher. He goes, what's your last name? I go, Condorman. He goes, get the fuck on the ground. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. So I was like sprawled out. Yeah. And they find the knuckles. I get the charges. Mm-hmm. And I ended up going away for like, I think it was a long weekend. Um, yeah. This, was, this wasn't the time I did 30 days. Unfortunately, that was a little bit sillier of a charge. Okay. That got me stuck in there for 30. Yep. But I have to say over my course of time, I've only done a total of about 48, 49 days. Okay. All right. So I've been in and out. It's yeah. just been very minimal. And mm-hmm. luckily, I just know people with money and they got me out. And right. I got good lawyers yep. and I have a lot of friends that pulled some strings for me. Yep. So they were all there supporting me, right. even though I didn't want them to. Right. 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 Um, and then uh, so obviously that relationship uh, ended and, uh, you know, yeah. now I'm, I'm with my wife and yeah. she was there for all yeah. that. And uh that was literally probably the worst thing I've ever, ever done. done. Yeah. And that still didn't stop me from yeah, drinking. It was still another 10 years. Yeah. Just because y- you're not going to change if you don't want to. Right. And it's almost like, you know, like I had said, you know, with my experience, people are coming from a really good place. But if you don't want to hear it, you don't want to hear it. And you're not going to hear it. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, I think you really need to change. You know, your health is getting is, is really concerning me. I don't care. Yeah. You know, I, I don't care. I feel fine. I feel great. Like, in, you know, and, and or what do you know? Right. And yeah. it's kind of like you don't want to hear that you need to change until something 
like you said, something traumatic happens or Nobody wants it's that, that that one experience where you're like, okay, like this, that was it. And right. that, now I need to do something about it. But that's the, that's the difference between, you know, the, the things that happen yeah. and, 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 and depression and addiction, mm -hmm. they are very strong holds. Yeah. And until something clicks, mm -hmm. it, you're going to be on that road. Absolutely. But the reason that we want to get this message out and the reason that I keep doing this podcast every yeah. week is because I want people to realize that anybody is capable of doing this. We're all capable yeah. of making ourselves better, mm -hmm. stronger people. Right. But you have to be focused. You have to want to put in time and you right. have to want to work it. Right. And if you don't want to do any of those, then mm -hmm. you can stay behind your keyboard and, and keep shouting at the world. And that I hope, you're right. I hope that nobody ever hears you because right. I know for a fact that like, you know, I, I post in ghosts all the time. Yeah. I've gotten some nasty stuff, but you know what? No one has said yet. Yeah. Anything that surprises me. No. Nothing. It's yeah. You must it, be so comfortable around your little keyboard. You're like, yeah. But yep. it's. It, they, they say things, and I and, and I was reading some comments. I, mm -hmm. I put up some shorts that have gotten a little bit of traction. Yeah. And I was reading the comments to her, and she's like, that's so mean. And she's like thumbs downing them. I'm like, oh, yeah. no, no, give them a heart. Yeah. I'm like, good, bad, yeah, doesn't matter. doesn't matter. But the thing is, mm -hmm. and she's like, well, why do you keep reading them? I go, because I'm waiting for somebody to say something that I don't know. I want, I, right. I, look, are you going to tell me something I right. don't know? Are you actually, you, because there isn't a name or something that you can say to me that yeah. I haven't even done myself, or said her. to myself, yep. or anything. Yeah. Like, I am my biggest critic. Yeah. I will put myself down underneath a rock and bury it. Yeah. There is nothing anybody out there can yeah. say that would actually hurt me. But I think that's really important, too, is, like, a lot of people, so, like, self-talk, self right? Mm. Like, the way you talk to yourself. Because... Um, we are our own worst critics, you know, and, and as you mentioned. But I think um, the more you say something to yourself, the more you start to believe it, yes. right? Or the more somebody says something to you, the more you start to believe it. If you know who you are, anybody can say anything to you, and it doesn't matter. You know, you're, okay, I know who I am as a person, and what you say has no effect on me. Yeah. Um, but I think the bigger is the conversation inside of ourselves, right? Yeah. Um, because... You could be, you could be married. You could be, you know, with somebody. You could be without somebody. At the end of the day, you're going to sleep with with yourself. Yep. Like, and it's, you know, you're not having these. You're having these mental conversations of, of man, I wish I did this or I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. Um, and it's all just giving yourself some grace, you know, mm -hmm. um, to learning yourself, uh, and just not being so so hard on yeah. you, you know, like, um, as you mentioned, like with jujitsu. I remember getting my first stripe. Professor Dan gave me my first stripe, and I remember talking to Mason, and I was like, "Did I really like deserve this, or, or did I just get this because I'm I'm your sister?" And Dan knows me, and I'm Tim's daughter, and you know, he's like, "No, he's like Dan wouldn't have given you that stripe if he didn't think that you I believe truly that. earned it." Yeah. Um. So I think you know we need to give ourselves the credit that some people around us give us, and even if they don't, you know, like you have to know, like. You beat your addiction, yeah. you know. You kick ass in jujitsu in jujitsu every week. Sometimes, right. yeah. Sometimes it comes out better, and, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. But you know, like it, it's just talking to yourself in a way that's that's positive, and it's going to be the best outcome for you. Yeah, and that, so. that's another thing that I I mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe mm -hmm. last week. I can't remember, but yeah. you, we are the only ones that get in our way. Like, oh, you, absolutely. You are your biggest obstacle. Absolutely. At the end of the day. I know I was, uh, I've been, you know, in this new position, working for this company for yeah. a year. I was super nervous to leave my comfortable job yeah. where I didn't have to worry yeah. about anything. And the only thing that slowed down my progress and my ability to learn this position was myself. Exactly. Because I kept telling myself, I'm not good enough. Right. I don't know if I can do this. I don't right. know. I don't know. Uh, that all got in my way. And slowed my progress. Yeah. If I had just, if I had just been like, no, you got this, do this. Yeah. It took me a couple years to even consider myself a podcaster. Yeah. That got in the way of my progression of my podcast. Right. I don't, I don't say that anymore. No. Cause because here you are. This is it. Yeah. So I always get mm -hmm. in my own way. Yeah. And that is so easy for us to do. Right. We're either talking ourselves down. Mm-hmm. Or we're getting in the way of our progress. Yeah. But we are the ones doing it to ourselves. Yeah. And 
at the end of the day, you have to learn to just accept who you are, mm-hmm. accept that what you're doing is what you want to be doing, yeah. and you are it. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. I am the franchise operations director of Rap City. I am. Yes. Talking with Topher podcast. Right. Those are the, th- I am those things. Yeah. I need to stop pretending like I'm not. Right. And start treating it as if I am. Right. Because then I will be able to progress further. Exactly. So. Exactly. We definitely stand in our own way. Yeah. You know, and, and it's the excuses, right? Well, I can't do this because I don't have the time. Or yeah. I can't do this because I don't know the ins and outs of a I, business. I or, mean, not yeah. to joke about it, but sometimes mm-hmm. we need to. I mean, you really almost completely got into your own way. I Absolutely. You know what I mean? And uh, so I will be honest with you. A lot of the times, like when when it's discussed now, like it's it's not like a, an icebreaker, right? Yeah, like yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. something that I just walk into a conversation <laughs> starting. No, um, <laughs> no, right? Oh, hey. fun, fun fact about me. Uh, yeah, no. I got something to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's it's um, it's something that I joke about. Yeah, um, and you should. That's okay to do. Right, that is and, okay um, to do. Yes. You know, like there's just there's so many people with with different things whether it's you know um everybody handles things differently like some Mm -hmm. people they isolate and they come back when they're better you know i have friends that disappear for months on end and they're like oh sorry i was going through something and and you need to do that that's fine i personally need to joke about the situation to make it almost lighter yeah because it it was very heavy think about it, it. it it was it was a very close call i mean I was intubated for two days because I couldn't breathe on my own. And, you know, my liver enzymes had to be um, watched. And, you know, there there were talks of even transplants because of the damage that I did to it, my body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, those those pills, uh, that stuff is, that's what it does to your system. Yeah. You know? It shocks. Yeah. Uh, Overloads. You take and, enough. Yeah. And once, the, once those organs have been mm-hmm. damaged... A lot of them don't really come back. Right. So if you have to have some type of like a liver transplant or something, yeah. that's very, very, very serious. Yeah. You know, I know as an alcoholic that mm-hmm. the one disease is cirrhosis. We don't want to get that because when the liver gets cirrhosis, uh, right. you're fucking dead. Yeah. It could be over. Mm-hmm. So when those things are happening, it, the pills can do the exact same thing yeah. to you. But what I was going to say before that was we need to laugh about our addictions. We need to have a laugh yeah. and kind of look back on it and be able to joke about it. Yet, yeah, Was it a serious thing that happened? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. But what is a comedian's job? A comedian's oh, job laugh at your pain. is to look yeah. at the entire fucking world <laughs> mm-hmm. and make fun of every bit of it. Absolutely. Why? Because we need to be able to laugh about it mm-hmm. so that we can talk about it. Right. So that we can learn from it. Right. So that we can feel more comfortable right. with the uncomfortableness right. of these conversations and these words and everything else yeah. um, that was discussed, not just here today, mm-hmm. but in everybody's lives everywhere. Yeah. Right? A yeah. bunch of families going to be getting together a couple days after this podcast. Yeah. You know, we just had Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. And, and so... You've got all the family coming together, which right. causes more anxiety, causes yeah. more of this, more of that. Mm-hmm. And if you can't have, if you can't have an open conversation, it makes it more difficult. Right. Cause it's, I know for a long time, um, like it, it wasn't f- until maybe a couple of years, like two years ago right. where I started to be honest about about what it was. Uh, no, it was not allergic reaction. Um, I, I made an attempt on my life. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, uh, not everybody knows. It's not something that I feel I need to share with everybody. If, if somebody, like I said, I had a 12 year old come to me and be like, you know, I I said, why are the, why are we, why are we acting out? Why are we, why are we getting suspended? Why are we, what is the root cause? Yeah. You know, and the more we got into the conversation, the more he's just sad. Yeah. You know, and, and these are just, he's just acting out and, and it's, it's, it's nothing to be ashamed of. No. You're, yeah. No. And, and I think having conversations about it makes it, makes this kind of situation and your kind of situation, um, easier to talk. It, it's, there's no reason to be ashamed. It makes it easier to talk about and having these conversations is important. Cause like I said, like the glorified, like I need a mental health day just cause I don't want to get out of bed and go to work type yeah. deal. I'm feeling lazy. Like, yeah. or, you know, like I, I reacted in this sense because I have anger issues, or because I, you know, and, and I think having like these real experiences that people can relate to in a sense. And, um, 
it just makes it easier for people to to be like, okay, I'm not alone. Like, yeah. you know, and he told me and I said, I, I told him, I said, I said, I understand. I said, and I understand a lot better than you think I do. And uh, I was like, and I was like, I'm on your team. Now I just need you to get in your own team. And I said, and I cannot tell you when that's going to be. And I cannot force you to do it. I said, but when you're ready, I'm here. Yeah. And sometimes just knowing that, it, but if he doesn't want to hear it, it's not going to register, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's just, it's such a, a hard balance to achieve. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I, 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 I true, I honestly, uh, a hundred percent agree with you yeah. and, you know, kind of, kind of touching on, you know, the, 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 the talk, your, your talk with the 12 year old, yeah. um, you know, I don't think now I'm, I'm turning, I'm already 44. Uh huh. Um, but so I come from a different generation. Yeah. I was a latchkey kid. Yeah. I ran the house. I, I, I did all kinds of stuff. I yeah. was told to go out. I wasn't allowed to be home. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. all these things that doesn't happen today. No. So these, no. The, the kids that are growing up today are growing up in their house mm -hmm. in front of a computer. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the schooling, yeah, everything got so screwed up mm -hmm. because of what happened. COVID and yeah, yeah. all of that shit. Yeah. So I have a uh 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 this this feeling of that the younger generation is actually dealing with more of these situations mm -hmm. because of all that yeah so have you ever seen the the documentary it's called the social dilemma yeah yeah, yeah that was so good. it's insane because like you said like 12 year olds their biggest thing now every 12 year old has a phone yeah you know and That's if wild. you know uh there are some people out there who you know the parents are like oh no and you know which is to each his own it's great that you can say no to your child and your child is like okay like yeah i get it um but there are you know the suicide rates Mm -hmm. And and thirteen year olds have skyrocketed. It's it's like two hundred and thirteen percent. Like that is insane. It's crazy. And you know it's social media and it's yeah. I'm I'm in front of a TV or I'm behind a screen. Young kids now and I'm I'm guilty of doing it. You know I'm out in public and I give Ari a tablet. Yeah. You know and granted there are parent like parental controls and she's not watching YouTube. But there are times when I give her my phone and she is scrolling on YouTube. And it doesn't matter if she's watching kid-friendly videos or kid-friendly videos that are suggestive because yeah. you can find anything you want to on YouTube. You can think it's the most innocent thing in the world and they cut to a clip real quick. So I definitely uh. think like social media was not very present, you know, right. um, in your guys' generation, even in mine, like, you know, like, okay, well, whatever, MySpace and, and, and all that, right, and, like right. the, the chat rooms and, okay, and whatnot. Okay. So that was, that but, was, um, that was where your generation was. You had the, you, I had we, MySpace we, we and, used MySpace, yeah. but like MySpace was, eh, it was all right. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. But. So, and it's just, I think, you know. I don't know if I, is that my fault playing with lights? Nope. nope okay. That's just that <laughs> is was, that's my house. Okay. I was like, I don't I don't know what's going on. No, nope, no, nope, we just ignore that. <laughs> okay, sounds good. I'm glad I pointed it out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um, you know, I, I think it follows people more <laughs> now than it, it did before yes. previously, you know. Yeah, it's it, it it's it's crazy to yeah. think about that. You know, something that is bringing the whole world together yeah. is destroying yeah. generations of people yeah. um, as we speak. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, because unfortunately for those uh, kids that are, you know, I, I, I am so glad that nothing I did ever wound up on social media yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. And now they have to, if they make a mistake, that's there forever. It is. And that's Whether it's picture proof or, right. and yeah. And that's what's sitting with them, yep. right? Because now they have this fear of, uh, oh my God, I could get canceled or this could happen. Yeah. Or all these yeah. crazy things. And it's like, how, how are you supposed to, you know, bring back even their, their comfort when they've already allowed uh the social media to make them uncomfortable like almost all the time all the time and I, all the that, time that's that's not the uncomfortableness that mm -hmm. i want people to experience right that's not what i'm talking what about what we're talking about here is with, it was within growth like you yes. have to push yourself outside of your comfort zone to uh you know achieve your goals and how you want to be as a person and and uh 
they're uncomfortable in a sense of like, it's like I mentioned, like, uh, I didn't get this many likes on my selfies and you know, uh, you know, I, I only have 452 friends on Facebook or, you know, I don't, I use that people use filters and you know, to, well, you don't look like that in your pictures. Like they're putting a lot of pressure on themselves for unnecessary reasons. Yeah. I haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't understand that. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I've definitely taken, you know, multiple hours, hundreds of hours of video yeah. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've flipped through those like filters, filters yeah. and I'm like, I always go back to the normal yeah, and, and just post. And, but, like, but, and that's the thing. What you're doing here is like, when I say social media, what you're doing here is very different, right? Oh, so I know. you're, you're trying to spread word of, you know, your struggles, everybody else's personal struggles, you know, other people's accomplishments, like you're doing good things. Um, when I say social media, I mean like they're posting things like for attention and oh, for see, validation. See, those are the things I can't get into. No, because I'm yeah. sorry. I don't care if I share a meme, I think it's funny. And right. I, don't, I don't care if you like it or if it offends you or you know this is because i thought it was funny or you just don't do it yeah you know i only have facebook um and i only have facebook because of work oh really Mm -hmm. see i'm more of an instagram fan yeah um but i i have them all for advertisement purposes which is different yeah it is different and but i still put a lot of clips out there i still get some negativity here and yeah. there. Just but let it roll off your shoulders. I just, you know what? it The way I look at it, and mm-hmm. obviously it's because I do this, but right. it doesn't matter if it's bad or good as long as it's getting traction. Yeah. And it just keeps getting yeah. pushed. Yep. So yep. I, I look at it like that, you know? Yeah. I, like I said it, it, earlier, you, you're not going to hurt me. Y- yeah. You're not. And, but mm-hmm. the problem is with the younger generation is that they do get hurt. They don't, right. they don't, they don't have this right. because they haven't been through something. They, right. they always say that the worst thing that you've ever been through is the worst thing you've ever experienced. Mm-hmm. So whatever your worst is, you know, yeah. for, for a rich person, it could have been, you know, not getting a specific car. Right. It was the worst thing that ever happened. Right. Right. So for other people, it's, it's much worse. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if that, Rich person having his daddy take away his car was the worst thing that ever happened to him. It's still the worst thing that's ever happened to that person. Right. Where, you know, somebody else going through the worst case scenario, it's completely Mm -hmm. different. Right. You know, my worst case scenario um, was, was, was basically that story. Yeah. That was, that was, that was the worst thing that I've ever done to somebody. Right. 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 Um, I fired a gun at somebody. Right. That's pretty fucking bad. So, 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 but it's, it's like, you have to understand that when you're at your worst, it's not everybody else's worst. Right. So you can't portray your worst scenario on other people. Right. And, and comparison is, is the killer of all of everything, you oh. know, because we could sit here all day between our experiences and, you know, be, well, I felt like this and I did this and we could go back for yeah. it. But my situation is not like yours and yours is not like mine. No, but and I like being understanding of that. though. Exactly. And, it, and it's fun for me now mm-hmm. to find the similarities. Right. In all of these. Yeah. Addictions and and, 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 and mental health issues. Yeah. That we're going through today because they are all similar. Right. They're not the same. Your worst is not my worst. Exactly. But at the end of the day, there was a right. lot of thought processes that were that alike. you had, mm-hmm. and I didn't know I was going to have a connection to them. Right. But I did. Right. And I understood them. Right. Which made me change the way I think about this. Absolutely, from today on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's well, what I'm I, glad that, I could, you know, help you, shed a little light is, on it. This yeah. is why I do it this way yeah. now because I'm I, I'm always looking to grow. Mm-hmm. I'm always looking to understand. Yeah, and it's so much easier to ask questions and let somebody explain. Yeah, and, and have that and, like and, authentic. And see yeah, how it is. It's 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 scary similar. Yeah, it's actually. Yep scary how much how similar these two yeah. worlds are mm-hmm. and how they all interact with each other yeah and how when you deal with it and you get in front of it mm-hmm. 
look at the person you are today. Yeah. You're, you're awesome. I mean, likewise, and, and you know, it's just, it's, yeah. it's good. To, I, I always get so excited when I see you at school. Yeah. Well, and, thank you. <laughs> and it's like, you know, and, and, and I've been anticipating this yeah. story for months now yeah. and I'm just so glad that we did it the way we did it. Well, thank you. Tanya Marie. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Um, and to everybody out there, <clears throat> I hope you enjoy the rest of your Thursday. I hope you have a Merry Christmas. And as always, I will talk to you later.